in this video we're going to be talking about stable diffusion and comfy ui all stuff related to artificial intelligence and we're going to be starting off with google banning stable diffusion from google colab we'll be looking at really significant price reductions in uh, Nvidia graphics cards. And also we'll be taking a look at a new package that allows you to do essentially the same thing as Photoshop's generative fill inside of open source software Critter. So last week, the story dropped that users who were using stable diffusion on Google Colab appear to have been banned. Now this story here from this website says that the popular A1111 Automatic 1111 has been banned from Google Colab. Uh, this is on Decrypt. And the story is that uh, Automatic 1111, the web UI, the famous web UI, has been banned from Google Colab. And artists trying to use it on Google Colab have actually not found it working. Now, the website goes into quite a lot more detail and argues that, in fact, this is slightly different. Uh, there's a slightly different story. And they actually quote one of the guys from Google, Chris Perry, who says stable diffusion isn't banned. Stable diffusion with a web UI uh, is restricted from our free tier accounts as we need to prioritize interactive notebook compute for our free tier. So they are still allowing free access on Colab, but they've restricted access for web UI. Now, I have confirmed the details of this tweet, and it does seem that uh, as Decrypt say, this move aligns with an update Google made to its terms of service earlier this year, so earlier in the year, which restricted users from running remote UIs and desktops. They go on to say that they hadn't really enforced this rule, but they are now taking a firmer stand. And the general idea is that there seems to be a limit in the amount of resources Google has to allow people to do this type of thing on Google Colab. I understand that it is still possible to pay for the service. It's just the free tier which has been restricted. So you can still pay for the service. It is not really a ban as such. It's just a restriction to try to protect some of the free tier and also to, of course, preserve capability and capacity for the paid tier. Now, this is something I kind of... Uh, I sort of really sort of expect it to happen, but I didn't expect things to happen this quickly and this suddenly. And I do wonder whether Google actually communicated things as well as they could, because I've been receiving questions from people on my course asking what the heck is going on. And it really, there wasn't really a very clear communication from Google, which would have given a, a good, simple explanation as to what was happening. And whilst we're talking about courses, I do want to remind uh, viewers that I now have got three courses over at Udemy covering uh, Comfy UI. We've got the beginner's course. We've got the very popular advanced level course. And we now have a generative AI mastery course, which I uploaded quite recently. So check that out on Udemy. I'll have a discount voucher in the description for that. Now, one of the suggestions as to why Google has acted now is Stable Swarm UI. This is a piece of software from a stability AI. And what it is, it's a user interface that allows you to use different versions of Stable Diffusion in the back end, including, of, co of course, uh, Comfy UI, which is very popular among stability AI. And this particular version allows you to create a front end with these other versions, uh, Comfy UI A1111, and it allows you to create a user interface with Swarm UI as the front end using these other uh, versions of Stable Diffusion as the back end. You can use it on Windows, on Mac, Linux. And one theory that's been going around is that users of uh, Swarm UI have actually been using up so many resources on a Google Colab that that is what led to the ban. I don't know whether that's true or not, but one thing that you can do with Swarm UI is to create a small swarm of GPUs that you can use together to enhance the power of your operation. And it could be that some guys using Swarm UI might have been using 
more resources than uh, Google anticipated. So that's one theory. We don't know whether the theory is correct or not, but certainly Swarm UI is a powerful piece of software and it's something I look uh, forward to talking about uh, maybe on this channel, maybe on my course later on in the future. Now, if all of this uh, news is a bit negative for you, one positive piece of news is that we have got falling prices in GPUs. I've been keeping an eye on prices of GPUs, particularly on Amazon. And as far as Amazon is concerned, prices are coming down. The RTX 4080, 16 gigabyte. This is the one that professionals will go for if they can't quite shell out the, the money for a 4090. This one has gone down to 1125 from Zotac. I'll have links to some of these. Uh, we have another one, which is the RTX 3060, 12 gigabyte version. Whoa, this one is at $284. Uh, it's again, number one, people love this uh, piece of hardware. And it is one which has been uh, very popular among artificial intelligence users. The most popular one is the RTX 4090 among professionals. It, unfortunately, the prices for the 4090 have not done anything except to go up slightly. I estimated about 3% increase in price for the 4090 since uh, the early summer. Now, another one that is very good in terms of its uh, price is the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte. That one is one we talked about earlier. That one is at $450. Uh, in fact, not only the 4060 Ti, but also the 4070 has fallen in price quite recently. It is just that 4090 that I saw going up in price. It's only about two to 3%, uh, the price increase. But the 4080, some of those are actually cheaper now than they were during the Amazon Prime Day. And for users who are interested in Amazon Prime Day, this seems like it may well be another one that might be coming up uh, fairly soon. I'll have more details about that later on. Now, there's a really fascinating piece of software called Generative AI for Krita. Now, Krita is an open source software, similar in some ways to Photoshop, similar in some ways to GIMP. Uh, it is used by people who like to do digital art. So obviously artificial intelligence is really, really relevant for that. And one user on uh, on um, GitHub has created what they're calling Krita AI Diffusion. This is a, a kind of a, a continuation of some of the work this user was doing earlier on. And if we take a look at what it does, it allows you to install inside of Krita a plugin that will basically call up Stable Diffusion. So what are you looking at here? You're li literally looking at something that allows you to use the tools inside of Krita to create images and to edit images inside of Krita. So this is maybe similar to something that we saw earlier from Intel, who created something for use with GIMP. I haven't tried this one yet, but I definitely do want to give it a go. Uh, I think Krita is a pretty cool package and it is uh, capable of doing quite a lot. And uh, there are some screenshots here. There's actually some video which uh, has been put up on YouTube showing how it works. I'll link to that in the description. And what they say is that the installation can be installed as a part of a specific installation to create a plugin for Krita. Or they say optionally, you can create a custom Comfy UI server. So this uses Comfy UI in the background. And because of that, I think it should be relatively powerful because you want something nice and fast if you're doing live editing. And uh, Comfy UI is, of course, the fastest version of Stable Diffusion that we have. Uh, there are some screenshots here showing the kinds of things that uh, you can do and the setting up of this. But if you already have a version of Comfy UI, it's possible that you may be able to get this optional option to get it to work uh, with your existing version. I mean, what they say Specifically, the plugin uses Comfy UI as backend. As an alternative to the automatic installation, you can install it manually or use an existing installation. If the server is already running locally before starting Krita, the plugin will automatically try to connect using a remote server is also possible this way. Probably will give you quite a lot of power especially if you have a powerful graphics card to be able to run these processes quickly. 
Now, speaking of Comfy UI, quick reminder again of the courses over at Udemy, the Generative AI Mastery one does have some lessons that were carried over from the uh, beginners course. There were a couple of lessons there, which originally I had in the beginners course. Um, I felt as time went by that they were maybe not providing the kind of value that I wanted them to provide to beginners. So I put them in the mastery one, but there are also two completely new lectures in the mastery one dealing with portraits and uh, and landscapes and how to generate large versions of those inside of stable diffusion. So check that out. It's definitely an interesting, if somewhat challenging course, but one which will really help you if you're looking to try to create professional outcomes like the guys can get with uh, with mid journey and some of these other packages. Now, as far as Critter AI Diffusion is concerned, we can see some screenshots here and they're kind of showing you how you can use the built-in tools to create uh, what looks basically like Photoshop. Uh, if you look, if you've seen the generative AI fill inside of Photoshop, this is more or less what they're doing. It's um, in painting using the built-in tools and this plugin. And uh, what we're getting is essentially something that behaves very similarly to our generative AI inside of Photoshop, uh, but we are using it currently in the beta version of Photoshop. Uh, I know that the new version of Photoshop is gonna be coming soon, the 2024 version. However, currently it is just in the beta version and when I used it, it wasn't brilliant. So I'm certainly looking forward to something from Stable Diffusion in software like GIMP, like Critter, which uses open source uh, and which meshes well with Stable Diffusion. Now, as well as creating things like, you know, handbags or whatever, replacing things that are already inside an image, it has also got the ability to use control nets. So there is plenty of uses for which you could adapt this particular plugin. So that looks pretty interesting. And I think I definitely want to give this a try, see how it goes. And uh, obviously it is early days, but I'm hoping that this will be something that I might be using over time.